If you want to see amazing and exciting duels, informative and entertaining top 10 lists, and everything else that's just great about the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, you gotta watch the Capital G Show. Shout out to my homeboy Dante. Hey. What's up YouTube? Capital G here. We're talking about decks that solely want to summon one powerful ass boss monster and asking the question, how far can that mentality, how far can that deck design take you? Uh, now, this is actually supposed to be the Legendary Fisherman 3. By now, you guys have probably seen other people talk about it or you've just read the card yourself. So it's not on Dueling Network, so we'll just have to kind of proxy it for right now. Now, I do want to make a quick distinction between like um, something like Burning Abyss and Six Samurai. I'm talking about decks where you summon that one boss monster and it is the win condition. You keep it alive by protecting it or just like your opponent having no outs to it. And then eventually this one card just kind of almost overwhelms your opponent. Um, the difference between something like Dante and Sheen is Dante is kind of like expendable. So I don't really consider Burning Abyss in this situation because if you summon Dante and it dies, a lot of times you can just get it back with Sir. It'll replace it itself instantly and sometimes you just give up your Dante for a downer magician like without a second thought so I really don't consider Dante as part of this group but I consider Samurai because Samurai like the last thing you want to have happen is you lose your Sheen but you always want to make this card in 99% of duels you know what i mean so i think that this card counts and um the rest of these don't and i'm also not considering something like um the venonaga because it's like an alternate win condition it's never really been viable in competitive play the card i don't even think it's it's never even top dated or regionals like ever if i'm not mistaken it would have i would have remembered it if it had so anyways <clears throat> We're talking about these huge decks that want to summon these one boss monster, protect them if necessary, and just win from that and asking if they can be like or what what tier they can be. Because we have the Legendary Fisherman 3 coming out. It looks like a card that is going to be incredibly difficult to kill. Um, I don't want to say it's like as good as Towers when it comes to like killing it, but you know, most people have said, oh, where well, there's Castell, Trishul, and Trevor, and I'm like, okay, well. You only name two outs for your deck, and if I have something like, you know, Breakthrough Skill or Skill Prisoner, I kind of have those covered. Effect Veiler, same deal. Now, I'm going to kind of talk about the positives and the negatives. Um, the first positive is the fact that your deck is not, like, it's not susceptible to conventional means of countering a deck. Like, um, if you look at uh, something like um, Cleefort Towers, Cleefort are really susceptible to uh, Spell and Trap Destruction, even past, like, turn one or two. But if you drop a first turn Towers and your opponent doesn't play an out to it, like, you're playing against Necroz and they don't play Decisive Armor, all of your skills, everything else, like your back row, it all becomes irrelevant. Like they're you're, they're they're not gonna win from a well timed MST or an Exiton Knight that blows you out or anything like that. Everything becomes irrelevant because if they can't kill this card, they they just can't win. Uh, your opponent can have like twelve cards in hand as long as it's early in the duel and you have a decent amount of life points. Eventually. Cleefort Towers will catch up to them as long as you don't deck out. Um, the same or the the next thing is. When it comes to side decking, your opponent's options are incredibly limited. Um, if you happen to drop your boss monster turn one, the turn one Quasar, the turn one Bills, Legendary Fisherman 3, although this is probably a better card going second because you want to get that that crazy Regeki Banish effect, or like a turn one uh, Stardust Assault mode, uh, what is your opponent really going to do about that? Like, usually... You could think of a couple of ways of making sure that these cards don't get on the board, although those side decking options are extremely limited and no one really plays those. I'm thinking cards like Black Horn of he or Black Horn of Heaven, uh, the regular Horn of Heaven, things like Force Back, but how many people are really playing those? Outside of that, uh, most people are playing ar archetype uh, specific cards, you know, or cards that counter entire archetypes. When you're not running an entire archetype, you don't have to worry about your archetype being countered. Uh, you know, cards like Mirror. Uh, effect Veiler, maybe Max C. Like, they don't really affect your opponent. Now, some of the obvious negatives are if you lose the key boss monster, you're probably going to lose the duel. Um, some of these can be summoned back when they're summoned properly, but then there are others like Towers, Legendary Fisherman 3, where even if they're properly summoned, you can't call up the Haunted them back. You can't Soul Charge them back. So once you get that one shot, you're pretty much going to be done. And the second is... 
even though these boss monsters are incredibly hard to kill, sometimes they do require assistance. Sometimes you will have to combine them with, you know, a key piece of effect negation, like a uh, skill prison or a breakthrough skill, effect veil. These are the three best cards I could think of because uh, they can, well, two of them can be used twice uh, from the graveyard and one of them can be used in hand. So I felt like this is kind of like the best trinity of effect negation cards. And speaking of effect negation, I'm not 100% sure on this. Probably one of you guys who's smarter than me especially when it comes to rulings will know but i believe you can use skill prisoner with the legendary fisherman three i know the card says that it's unaffected by uh spell cards or spells and traps but you know if you read skill prisoner it just says that you have to target one card you control so even though it's unaffected by traps it doesn't stop you from actually targeting the card and then skill prisoner will be able to negate the card that's targeting the legendary fisherman that's important because if your opponent tries to use that cast or they try and use a uh, giant hand to negate the effect of a uh, legendary fisherman then this could obviously stop them and it can stop from the graveyard as well so like your opponent could have both of those cards and they could lose out to a single copy of um skill prisoner i would say the last achilles heel for these type of decks that want to summon one huge boss monster and win if you're running a deck where you actually have to draw the cards to actually summon it the obvious problem is what happens when you draw multiple copies of it in your first hand or your opening hand you're just you know it's, it's going to be difficult enough to summon one but then the second copy becomes almost complete completely useless and just becomes absolutely dead weight especially in the early game and then if you haven't if you happen to have a, a situation with like legendary fisherman 3 where the card currently isn't searchable although that could change i'm hoping that kunami will release a card that says like you know add one fisherman card from your hand or from your deck to the to hand or something like that if these cards aren't searchable then that means you inherently have to run a ton of draw cards and it also means you have to run like three copies of these to kind of make sure that you ideally open open with the card so let me know what you guys think of this i'm i mean i'm i'm thinking that these could potentially like the the ceiling for them would be like maybe regional top eight i don't know if they'll have enough consistency because consistency to 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 be able to like top on a ycs level because of the potential of drawing multiples in the opening hand because if your boss monster dies you probably will lose the duel and because there will be games where you just don't have the ability to drop that opening boss monster and if you're not dropping that boss monster a lot of your other cards are solely to facilitate you dropping the boss monster so they're not really like useful so let me know what you guys think thank you for watching as always subscribing makes life happy